Back in the early 2000s, I was infatuated with anything that would make me involuntarily urinate. An adolescent with a seemingly high tolerance to anything that would make my friend Kyle say, Nah, dude, that's a scary. For example, just, just to show you guys how tough as nails I was, I'm not gonna brag, but I was kind of a badass as a kid. I could eat a freaking chainsaw if I wanted to. No, that's, that's a lie, but <laughs> I, I was... An adventurous little sh When I was a kid in my hometown, we had this little swampy area that was at the bottom of this hill. And it was covered by trees, so the passerby, any any sort of passerby could not see this area. But I'd always drag my friends, we'd go down there, and we'd do weird shit like dig up old shopping carts <laughs> out of the green lake. We'd explore the sewer pipes that obviously smelled like fecal matter. Sometimes we'd ride our bikes out there at like 3 a.m. and just tell ghost stories. <laughs> the place was completely abandoned, okay? I mean, with the exception of the homeless people who would go down there, go behind the trees, and give each other prostate exams. It was a weird place. I feel like I've strayed off the original topic of this video. As a kid, I was really obsessed with horror-themed video games, TV shows, movies, but there was always that red-headed stepchild of entertainment. That little thing in the back of your mind that you just, you didn't really want to touch. I'm talking about books, man. You know those things that your secret codes year 2003 and 2004 were printed on? Yeah, those. You dingus. I remember being in middle school, English class specifically, and uh, Let's be honest, we really didn't need that. I speak English? Uh, hello? <laughs> Speaking of English class, our teacher, Miss Cummings, uh, she was, you know, our regular teacher, but we had the substitute, Mr. Cooperstein, who, uh, he was, he was a weird dude, right? He would, he would go to the urinals and piss standing up, but he would have his pants around his ankles like a fucking five-year-old. The dude was weird, man. He would, he would read porno mags during class. It was, it was a whole thing, but we're not talking about that. Our teacher, Miss Cummings, would pretty much just tell us to read a book for the duration of the class, and we could take it home for the week if we wanted to. I remember walking walking over to the bookshelf and picking up a Goosebumps book. I was familiar with the weird Canadian show, but having the in-depth storytelling in the form of words on a piece of good smelling paper, it was like mainlining marijuana mushrooms into every orifice in my body. And that spit was so good that it was the only thing that kept me off replaying a chatless Resident Evil Outbreak server and scrolling through scrambled porn channels on basic cable. Anyway, I ended up reading every single Goosebumps book on the shelf, and I wanted more. I was craving a rush harder than a suburban alcoholic housewife who was fresh out of a divorce. And that's when I found the Holy Grail. Hidden away like it needed to be disposed of. Like it was riddled with HIV and every sexually transmitted disease that you can't think of because it hasn't oh been invented God. yet. Almost intentionally. Surrounded by coloring books and stuff that the kids in the class wouldn't normally go for. The cover caught me immediately because it was like, hey, this is scary. Stories to tell in the dark. Now at this point I'm looking at this thing like, come on man, I just read a book about a kid who put on a mask and then couldn't take off the mask? I think I can handle this. And then a couple days later I was, uh, I was scared to sleep in my room. What this book did was it took my brain's virginity and desensitized me to all things that kids should typically be afraid of. I was completely desensitized to death, human nature, supernatural, and all things spooky. In short, it's spooky. Written by the mastermind Alvin Schwartz, his fantastic storytelling is only half the story. Stephen Gamble provided the terrible, but in a good way, illustrations that accompany every story. His illustrations are permanently tattooed in my hippocampus. You know, I've previously made a joke about a hippopotamus enrolling into community college, but I'm not gonna do that here. <laughs> For those of you who have never read the books, which I'm sure you have if you clicked on this video, but I just ordered the box set. So if it gets here in time, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what one of these books looks like uh, right around here. So the package did arrive on time, so I figured now I could actually show you guys what one of these books looks like. Crack this open. Okay, so as you can see, the book has arrived. I ordered the box set, so it came with all three books. Look at that shit. You got a corpse, a dead body. You know, no big deal. You got this guy. He's a, a severed head that falls down the chimney. My thoughts exactly. How many of you guys know somebody who had a child a little too early? <coughs> Needless to say, exposing children to such grotesque images garnered a less than stellar response from all the parents donning bob haircuts, battling a skin rash in their pubis modest area, from being promiscuous on the weekends because they like to have fun, but want to preach on what their kids can and cannot read on the weekdays. I mean, this book was a big deal. 
People were upset. I'm not gonna sit here and say like, I don't know why, right? Like, I get it, I'm not some stupid dumb baby. The books covered a myriad of sensitive topics, like murder, disfigurement, cannibalism, you name it. Described as sick, repulsive, really disgusting, and not appropriate for children. If you don't mind, I would just like to uh, read a little snippet of what one of these parents had to say about the aforementioned anthology. Right away, I thought of Jeffrey Dahmer, concerned parent Jean Jaworski, told the Argus Press back in 1995, explaining her shock at discovering one of the gruesome stories her son had brought home. The story in question was Wonderful Sausage, which appears in the second book of the series, and tells a Sweeney Todd-esque tale of a man chopping his wife up to make into a sausage. This was way past being scary. But I mean, that, that kind of sounds awesome, right? To a kid, I mean. You know, kids back in the day, they, they wanted something edgy and different to read, right? Like. This series was a wet dream before the wet dream. Like many before and after her, Jaworski appealed to her local library to remove the books from circulation. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark was uh, listed as the most challenged book of the 90s, the 2000s, and again in 2012 for some reason. I like how they use the word challenge, like this book needs assistance to use the restroom. It wasn't challenged, it was just off the beaten path. It was against the grain, right? It gave my fragile little mind something to experiment with. For a lot of kids who grew up in my generation, this series did play a big part of our lives. I mean, I was a lot less sheltered than most kids, so I had the freedom to read these books without my mom going into my school and peeing on my teacher's desk. <laughs> Seeing something as simple as a book create so much controversy was truly an impressive feat. You know, I'm not talking about Catcher in the Rye, because I think that made the guy killed John Lennon. This didn't do that. <laughs> Not to get cheesy, but these are the memories that we hold on to for the rest of our lives, because as we grow up, we realize that true horror lies in the monotonous day-to-day -day of just trying to get your fucking bills paid. You look back as to what used to scare you as a kid, and you think, Man, I was a pussy. Side note, they labeled this book as controversial, but let me tell you a story. See, I had to go to summer school, and they forced us to read Tears of a Tiger. Now, if you don't know what Tears of a Tiger is, allow me to enlighten you. Tears of a Tiger is a book about some high school friends who are also basketball players that decide to drink and drive. They get in an accident, one of their friend dies slowly by burning in the car, the lead character is the driver of that car, and he's so struck with guilt that he, spoilers, ends up killing himself by shotgun blast. <laughs> This book scarred me for life because of the graphic portrayal of it all. There, there was not a modicum of fantasy like there was in Scary Stories. I just, I don't understand the hypocrisy. Or you could force kids to read this book about some kid shooting himself. You're, you're upset about a book with, with some scary pictures? Are the pictures too scary for you? Are the, are the, are the pictures- I don't know man, I'm, I'm kind of ranting at this point, but Moral of the story is, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is a great series. The movie that just came out is an excellent adaptation and very true to the source material. So if you're into that sort of thing, I highly recommend it. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Hey, Vsauce, tired as shit here. It's currently 3 a.m. and I finally got done editing this video, but I totally forgot I needed to induct a few new patrons into uh, our little boogers wall, which we will be getting a new one very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, the administrator has joined the chat. Please give a polite welcome to Polite. And last but not deceased, Alpha RW. Thanks again to my patrons. You guys are the fucking bee's knees. There's there's really no word to describe you guys, because I mean, you guys are giving me your hard-earned money to, to do this shit. That, that's fucking awesome. You guys rock, seriously. Thank you. And to everybody else, thank you for watching. Seriously, thank you. Uh, be sure to go hop on over to my second channel. I've been doing some stupid shit over there. You guys, you guys can go go look. Yeah, I'll see you guys sometime in the future or the past. See what happens.